Legacy. Hello once again, I'm Doc Rodden, and this is Horror News Radio, the official Gruesome Magazine podcast. Back with me again this week are the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-hosts on the net, and tonight we are reviewing Hannibal Season 1, Episode 5, titled Cockles. And we're going to uh, look back... <laughs> It's We're gonna look back at the episode, <laughs> and suddenly, and suddenly, we're all ten again. I know. <laughs> Wonderful! All right, uh, let me introduce the laughing crew. Starting off with Dave Dreyer. Dave, how you doing, sir? Hello. This is very important to note. I am not the one who laughed at cockles. It was not me. <laughs> it, it, well, it might have a little bit to do with our pre-show, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We are in a good mood. All right. Also joining us is. <sighs> Award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. How you doing, Chris? Are you smelling me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you? It's hard, you? It's hard not to, sir. It's hard not to. Say, we've been wanting to talk to you about that, actually. <laughs> yes, yes. What is it? What is it? It looks like your, the aftershave has a bottle with a ship on it, or something like that. Right? Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a nice way to do it without product placement. Uh, we like that. Also joining us as a <laughs> podcasting rock star and international cosplay queen. Vanessa Thompson. Vanessa, how you doing? <laughs> yes. Oh, nice little angel wings for tonight. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we we don't get um, uh, we don't get uh, your your favorite uh, cast member tonight, do we? Mm -mm. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, a lot of bloom. It's Just, all cockles. That's okay. It's all, all cockles. cockles. <laughs> well, not, not entirely, but that's fine. That's fine, you guys, you goobers, you. All right. So what we do here is we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll give our first impressions of the of the show. We'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll wrap up and give our our uh, you know our our review one to five. And why am I stumbling over this after seven and a half years? I don't know why. It's the cockles. It's the cockles. It's the cockles. And, <laughs> it's the cockles. Or, or the lack thereof. And. I need to kick you in the cockles. Oh my gosh, <laughs> guys! And our favorite scene. Oh, jeez. All right, well, let's. What are we talking about? We are talking about Hannibal, uh, season one, episode five, cockles. Uh, a murdered couple is found in a motel room, posed like praying positions, with the flesh in their backs open and strung to the ceiling to give the appearance of wings. Using hairs collected from the motel pillow, the. Uh, the BAU team discover several medications used to treat brain tumors in the killer's bloodstream. Graham sur uh, surmises that the killer is transforming his victims into guardian angels to watch over him because he's afraid of dying in his sleep and barking dogs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember the dog. Oh my God, the dog ate Vanessa. Oh no! Oh, shit. All right, well, let's give our first impression this. Um, <laughs> Hannibal, season one, episode five. Christopher, you're up first. Um, <laughs> I feel like Vanessa is the Will Graham of, of her. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all her dogs in her house. Go into um, my mind palace. Your mind palace, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, a really great episode. I think, um, you know, again, we have another one of those sort of weird-ass killers who does really artful things it's uh you know we have that like this scene that's behind me that's reflective kind of rem reminds you of a little phone called signs of lambs yeah, you know? there's a little <laughs> bit of that there yeah. um but um and then you also have uh, the scene which i referenced at the beginning which is you know they use that scene in signs lambs as well where he smells uh clarice's perfume which is actually from red dragon because in red dragon the book um he smells uh, Will Graham's aftershave. Um, so we have a lot of that in this. But yeah, it's a really great episode that we start delving more into um, Will Graham and his sort of descent into madness. Um, but we also have a really interesting side story with Jack Crawford as well. That's, you know, watching it again, I actually got teary eyed. I got emotional. It was very, uh, very powerful scene. Um, uh, between him and and actually uh, Lawrence Fishburne's real wife, uh, Gina Torres, um, so they they definitely have chemistry, that's for sure. Um, uh, but then also you have some really great um, you know uh, scenes between Hannibal and uh, and Will Graham, you know, to where where Hannibal's trying to bring him onto Team Hannibal <laughs> instead of uh, Team Crawford, and, and there seems to be a little bit of a, a, a 
issues between uh, Crawford and Graham. So yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. You know, you know, we have that really cool effects of the the you know the angel wings thing, which um, we've talked about this before, where the suits thought it was too graphic showing their asses, so they put a blood down their crack. No, so, yeah. but crack. Yeah, so let's let's just throw more blood on it. That'd be better. And and watching it again, it still blows my mind. This came on NBC because it's like there's some close ups of the 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 severed skin yes. and the backs and all that stuff. And Whoa. why am I turning into a ghost <laughs> now? Oh. <laughs> You're fading away. Um, I don't know what the hell happened there. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, I was going into my mind palace for a second yes, there. You were. That was uh, but yeah, I thought it was a really, really great episode with some really <clears throat> wonderful dialogue. I think one of my favorite um, dial, other than the, the funny part of when when Graham's like, "Are you smelling me?" <laughs> um, and also the really cool thing with uh, Hannibal, where he can actually sense if you have cancer. <laughs> It's like, you know, he makes, puts guard, he puts dogs to shame, you know, with it. Uh, but um, there's a, there, there's a scene where that, um, where uh, Jack Crawford says that the, that the guy used the name John Smith when he checked in and Will Graham says he has an appalling failure of imagination. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm, I, I completely forgot about that line. I'm going to start using that in real life. Anytime someone says something that's like, oh, there's not a magic, there's not a, that's not really imaginative of what you just said. I'm going to use that phrase. So just <laughs> look out. Doc. Yeah, that's gonna, win, <laughs> that's gonna win you a lot of friends. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm gonna turn into Will Graham for sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. A sociopath by the end of it. <laughs> by the end of it. Um, all right, let's find, out, <laughs> let's find out what Dave Dreyer thought. Dave, what is your first impression of Hannibal season one, episode five? Cockles, cockles, sorry. Well, this is the, the first episode where we really start to see what this show is going to be for me. Yes. Uh, we we still got the we still got the uh, the killer of the week thing a little bit, but the show is very much morphing into a, a character study of Will Graham and Hannibal. And uh, it, this was just a great episode of, of the five we've watched so far. This is by far the absolute best, uh, like much like Christopher rewatching this, uh, you know, uh, it's emotional. It really is. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is is fantastic in this. Uh, it really, honestly, it should have been an, an Emmy winning moment for him. It was a fantastic performance in this episode. Um, uh, and and still, our our uh, killer. I, I like the flaming heads, and I like the. Of course, the the blood angels were awesome. Uh, it was just a a, a really complete uh, journey in this episode. Uh, I really enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, I don't remember. I, I'm up to episode. I started watching episode six already, but I can't remember uh, if there's going to be another episode as good as this one in the first season. But I'm going to go with probably not. Oh, wow. Well, OK, well, that's high praise, sir. Yeah, I, I think this show has definitely found its footing or is finding its footing with this episode. So it'll be uh, very interesting to see where uh, to, to re-see in some cases uh, where this goes. Uh, Vanessa, this is your first time seeing it. Uh, what was your first impression of Hannibal season one, episode five? Oh, when I saw that, I was really shocked, too, that they showed something so graphic um, on network television. And then I noticed the butts and I was like, oh. There it is. <laughs> there it is. No, it's a really, this is a really strong episode. Quite an uptick from the last one. Um, I would almost say it's going back to what, you know, when you're getting into mushroom people and some of the earlier, earlier, earlier episodes that we've seen so far, where they're really getting into these um, graphic killings, these graphic, like, super on theme serial killers that we have throughout the show, which I really enjoy seeing. Um, and this one was interesting because they they have a way of they're weaving this story into our main character's story kind of very seamlessly and so tragically, you know, especially in the moments where um, Lawrence Fishburne is coming to the realization of of what's actually going on with his wife and some of the things that he says to her where he's like, I'm not going to insult you by asking if you're having an affair. And as that's going through his mind and then later on he realizes no she's actually dying it's really it pulls on your heart so deeply um that it just makes it allows the the our killer of the week to be more sensational and crazy while 
the reality of what's happening to our main characters kind of grounds it. Um, I just, I I really loved it. And I really want to talk about, you know, later on how, how our killer does what he does to himself. Oh, I don't know how he does that. I don't yeah, know. Uh, there a couple things he does to himself. Yeah, there, I, don't know. Um, yeah I, I have to agree. <laughs> I have to agree that this, this episode really uh, it won me over. It, 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 I'm trying to remember, Dave, if it, it does it get better than this one? I, I feel like it does because we, we get more characters coming in uh, with the, the second half of the uh, season that, uh, you know, we really start to enjoy. Um, so I think um, I think this is when, looking back at it, this is when I knew I was a huge fan, I think, with this episode. And I think it is almost entirely due to Jack's reaction um, in, in there when they're inter they're interviewing our killer's wife. And, you know, they he's, like, gone missing for, like, months and months, and there's a reason why. And when she's describing why, uh, it – it clicks with Jack uh, and Lawrence Fishburne just kills the acting. I mean, he, the way he reacts to it doesn't say a word, but everything is in his, his face and his body and his actions. And, um, and that, and you see, will realize it, but knowing that he can't do anything about it because of the situation they're in with, you know, mid interview. So, uh, and he, you know, he takes over it, it um, with the interview. It, it's really wonderfully written, wonderfully played out and um uh, and and directed as well so uh and that's not and that's that i don't know if that's your tear-jerking moment christopher it's either that or it's when he actually confronts his wife and they you know they have that discussion because that's that's pretty powerful too and that's when both of them really just kicking in um yeah. yeah and i think there's some really wonderful moments with with uh hannibal and um and and Jack Crawford's wife. What's what is her name? Bella. Uh, Bella. 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 Oh, that's right. Bella, 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 Bella. Bella. Yes. <laughs> oh, how how can I forget? <laughs> what a what a great dinner scene mm -hmm. that was. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and you know, that's where we get the first sniffing scene, right? Because he, <laughs> he he smells something, but what he what he says he smells is her perfume, but we know that's not true now. And uh, but it. Yeah, so when he the, the scenes between the two of them I thought were really really strong. And then on the other side we get some interesting conflict with uh Will Graham and Jack that um might be some of my favorite scenes out you know that aren't the real drama scenes they're just kind of some of it is dramatic but some of it's kind of comedic in in its drama uh, a real nice interesting way of handling it. Um uh what else? Um I think I'm going to stop there. I mean, I just really like this episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I mean, I'll just ramble on. I'll just ramble on. Uh, Amads was particularly marble muffed in this episode, though. Was he? I mean, was you know, he? I, yeah. I, I, my wife was sitting down here when she watched it with me, and she's like, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I can't understand the damn word he says. There there and, were, <laughs> yeah, there were for a few moments where it's like, because I think the the last few episodes I didn't, I was like, I don't, I don't need to put on subtitles with this one. I was like, I had to like pay attention. That was like one time I had to rewind it to, <laughs> to hear what he yeah, said. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it, what it is or was, but it, it seemed particularly bad in this episode. But uh, again, that's kind of nitpicky. Yeah. Kinda, at, at this far in, we've accepted him as. Yeah. Well, he, he does, he does continue to get better uh, throughout the series. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. He does. And I wonder if. Well, I don't know what the deal is. I I don't think I noticed it, but I I always always watch the show. Well, I I think <laughs> I, I think subtitles. On. I think, <laughs> I, this, I think Just, this is one of his first big like English roles, or at least I think it is, because mm -hmm. I think I read that like he was having. I think I heard Brian Fuller talking about he was having problems with because he had these long dialogue sequences where he had to deliver a lot of these big words. And so I can understand that. And I think, yeah, I think throughout the process difficult. of it. Yeah. And I think it's just like training, like anything else, trying to learn a different language where you're just like, I think he worked with it and he got better as it went along. And yeah, there's a little, there's a few times where he goes back and forth, but that's what subtitles are for, I guess. But yeah. um, it, also, it also gives him a little bit of character too. And I, well, I yeah, yeah. That. Cause he's, you know, he's supposed to be sort of like that European mystery, you know, guy or whatever. Yeah. He's classy. And so, I think he pulls that off, but yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, I think, um, again, just watching this again, you think about all the different elements and 
people always look at this first season because it's more of like a per- detective procedural because mm-hmm. it's always about this murder or that murder. But every murder ties into the other characters in some way. You know, even the foods tie in because yep. you have like the, the was it faux gras? I'm not probably pronouncing that right. Yeah. Um, which is involving stuffing stuff into uh, a duck, you know, that, you know, to try to get this type of meal to happen in the same way that you have this invading cancer that's happening with Bella. And you also have uh, Will Graham, who's being like force fed all these thoughts and evil stuff and like Hannibal. You know, here I'm turning into a ghost again. Um, <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, but all that stuff ties in and it's, and it's really great. I mean, in, in the same way that, that the, the, the cancer is invading Bella and turning her into a different person, this cancer is sort of uh, evil that's invading Will Graham is doing the same thing, thing to him. Mm-hmm. And it's so powerful. And you were, you mentioned earlier, like you were asking about like, what was the emotional moment? Yeah. I think the end thing was emotional, but, I think one of the most powerful scenes that's happened in this series when it comes to acting has to be that scene where um, Jack Crawford has that realization Mm -hmm. that what this woman is talking about is with his wife. And it is one of the best acting performances, you know, in this series is him in the same way that Hannibal sometimes has to do certain things where he's like, you can see internally what's going on with him. You see it to where he's having to hold it in. He's having to hold his emotion in and he still has to be like professional, but it hits him like a brick, you know? And it's like, Oh my God, I got him. You know? And even it's not one of those scenes where it just, it comes out like, Oh, you have cancer. You feel it. You feel it because (laughs) when you hear, hear saying that and you see the realization, Oh shit. I mean that that scene is so powerful, and and even though I've seen that stuff before, watch it again, and then when he has that moment between him and his wife later, when he they have that conversation, okay. I, I mean, as someone that I, I I can't imagine people that have to deal with that when it comes relationships. Um, you know, I've had family members die of cancer <clears throat> and stuff. So it, it, oh god, it's so powerful. But yeah, you have that kind of stuff in this thing that people just look at the whole. Um, Hannibal and Will Graham thing, but there's that aspect as well. And I love the way it ends to where, you know, Will Graham is like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm here when you want to talk. Yeah. That, that's and, a great moment when he walks uh, in there and they just sit there and that's a perfect way to end this episode because it circles back around with their, their relationship as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's let's uh, Vanessa, you mentioned uh, you wanted to talk about, and this is spoilers for those who haven't seen it. And if you haven't seen it, it's 2013. Come on. <laughs> uh, our, our, our villain, our serial killer this, this week, uh, basically prepares himself to be an angel uh, and even castrates himself. What exactly did you want to know? Is it the castrating <laughs> or the angel thing? What, what, I I want to know about um, no, you know, what I found was interesting about the whole thing with this killer is that they tie in the supernatural aspect to it because, you know, he's saying he's doing the Lord's work and, and he's taking out all these bad people. And he actually is right. These people are all bad people that he's killing, that he's somewhat uplifting, helping, you know, cleansing their sins by making them angels. Uh, <clears throat> I thought that was really interesting, but I, I think, so I, I really love the fantastical with this and what they do and all the crazy mushroom people and whatnot. But to me, the our killer's self, uh, or his murder, the way he murdered himself, suicide, I guess, uh, just kind of, took me out of the whole thing because it, that was really unbelievable to me. How did yeah. he do how that? Do it's like, yeah. how you get up there? Yeah. How, how <laughs> would you do that to yourself at all? So and, that and kind of, you know, maybe brought he, it down for me. Maybe he didn't. Well, no, right. I thought about that too, especially since I've watched ahead a little bit, you know, maybe he uh, didn't. and speaking of watching ahead a little bit, I'm kind of wondering now about the sniffing of will and you know, what, we find out about it, Will later it's, on. It's not the cologne. Right? No, like, because now cologne. we know what Hannibal can do. Yep. No. His superpower, his super yep. sniffer. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the fact that they don't really explain why he only saw, <laughs> sees the fire around people that have done bad things. Right? Yeah. They just don't bother explaining. Yeah, you know, very you know, supernatural. Is it, is it pure luck or, you know, because they, they, they agree that he doesn't know. Yeah, he's not researching these people. He's just 
encountering them. Yeah, they were uh, just choosing them. And yeah. Then, yeah. So that was a that was kind of a downer for me throughout the whole episode. But you know, that aside, I was really more invested in our in our main characters and their and their storyline. Yeah, really. the The story between uh, Jack, Will, uh, Jack's wife, and Hannibal Bella. is really and Bella. Yeah, it's really where. Uh, although I will say that when Will turns around and our you know, the guy's standing there it, it, it was, a, was a jump scare for me. It got me. I should have known it was there, but I jumped. <laughs> damn, damn it. What the hell? <laughs> they get uh, you sometimes. All right. Well, uh, this is, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting, Dave, to see if we can end up topping this episode as we go along. Let's, let's yes. wrap, let's wrap this up. Uh, what we do is we'll, we'll go ahead and give a final thought. Maybe where you think the show's going or whatever, however you want to address the final thoughts. Uh, we want to get a score one to five. It'd be interesting, Dave, to see what you give. And of course, this is the best part, your favorite scene. Uh, but before we do, if you like what you're hearing and seeing tonight, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like or dislike. Either way, we don't care. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I say that. But uh, <laughs> hit the bell so you can be reminded. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you uh, subscribe there as well. Uh, and we'd love to hear some comments. I hope you're enjoying us revisiting uh, this classic, um, nearly perfect television show. Uh, all right, so let's do this. Are we going to do the same order? We are. So Christopher G. Moore, you're up first. Let us have it, sir. Before you fade um, away. Yeah, before <laughs> I fade. Um, and then I'll wake up in the middle of the road. Um, uh, yeah, I, again, another, you know, return, you know, uh, you know, with the last episode not being at its strongest point based on the content, um, this returns us to sort of those elements that make the, the show re work really well. And, and we're definitely building to um, these characters and seeing their, their growth um, and them moving towards, you know, whatever they're moving towards, whether it's uh, dealing with, uh, you know, a family, uh, person they love dealing with cancer or dealing with like, am I going crazy? Like Will Graham. Um, and, and how, you know, Hannibal's always there trying to manipulate certain situations. So, um, but yeah, I, 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 I love, you know, again, what makes the show really good is that visually always has really great moments like this, this shot behind me, which is like, you could frame that, put it on a wall. Um, well, he, some people might not think that would be cool, but I think it's cool. Uh, <laughs> reminiscent of a moth. I'm yeah. 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 That. Like a moth. Um, uh, a death heads moth. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, or, or, you know, just, you know, the, 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 the way they created the, the flames in people's heads was seeing what the guy, the visions, the guy sees, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think, um, again, each episode, you know, they always have really great pieces of dialogue. The, 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 the banter between the, the people was uh, working on these different, uh, murders and stuff, trying to figure out who did it. You know, it just all, it all comes together and, and just shows me how, how everything is, there's a specific reason behind the dialogue, the specific reason behind why these elements happen in the, in the show, because it all ties into the characters and and their motivations and how they're ever changing based on the situations they're dealing with. So yeah, I think it's another you know episode that hits out of the park. Um, I, I if if I had to give it a rating, maybe um, four point five out of five, I guess. I like that. Um, yeah, I'm always going to give it high ratings. Just yes, you are. I'm just yes, you letting are. you know. Um, and as for favorite scene. I think it has to be that scene where Jack Crawford yes. has that realization Yes, Powerful. that, Powerful. you know, as someone who's always trying to figure out people's motives and why they do things, you know, he just figures out, Oh, this is what my wife has been. This is why my wife has been acting weird towards me. Cause it's the same thing that's happening to this woman who was dealing with her husband. And yeah. that, that is, it just reminded me like how great Lawrence Fishburne is. And I'm glad that they, he's not just this character. He yells at people. <laughs> you know, I think they used to joke about like, he always yells at somebody about every episode. <laughs> um, uh, 
so yeah, I, I think giving him that kind of side story, which which is actually from Science of Lambs, they actually mentioned he met her in Italy. Oh, nice. and uh, the, and also they mentioned the cancer part of it as well is in the book, you know, and there's a lot of stuff they pulled from Red Dragon as well. They actually mentioned, um, I think one of the killers, um, which is from Red Dragon. Um, yeah, uh, Chesapeake, actually, Chesapeake Ripper, they mentioned that for the first time, which was, you know, uh, mm, was in Red Dragon. You're yeah. right. I so the, there's that. all, you know, there's there's all kinds of things you know, that's throughout the whole episode that, that are ties into either red dragon or, or even, even Hannibal, the whole uh, red Eagle thing is from actually from the Hannibal book. I think Clarice talks about it. So it's just kind of fun how they like little smattering of different things from all the different books and, and the things, although the whole thing of smelling cancer is, is definitely something this show only has. <laughs> usually oh, you yeah. smell your perfume or, or not like cockles well, or cockles. <laughs> Which yeah, orchiac <laughs> which orchiectomy is they basically cut his balls off. He cut his own balls off. And, oh. um, but anyway, yeah, I think it's another great episode. It's oh. another reason why it's I love this show so much. Oysters. Yeah, <laughs> oysters. And and actually that I, you always love the titles. It all talks about, you know, uh shell oyster and how these people they put the shell on and you don't know what else going on inside of it, you know. So Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> all right dave what is your final thoughts your score favorite scene for him <laughs> um yeah this is a, a great episode uh again knowing what we know of what's going to come uh this is the first sign of of what they're able to do with this show uh you know with our main characters uh a favorite scene is absolutely there's no you can't pick any other scene other than the one that christopher already picked uh, I, I hate to d double up on it, but I mean, really, honestly, he should have gotten an Emmy nod for that. I mean, it is an amazing piece of acting. It really is. I actually, when I was watching it, I rewind it, rewound it and watched it again. Then I rewound it and watched it again. Um, as it was just that good. Uh, but there's lots of other great visual stuff in this. Obviously the first time we see the blood angels, uh, you know, uh, would uh, would certainly rank right up there as well. I'm awake um, now, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's I'll wake you up. Um, so, uh, so yeah, really, really strong. Definitely the strongest of of the first five we've watched. Uh, and uh, I liked it. I liked this a lot. I'm going to give this a four. A four, solid yep. four. I like it. All right, Vanessa, you're up next. Give us a skinny. Uh, I yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed the way that the you know our introduction, our full introduction to Bella. Uh, I think uh, well, I didn't know that Gina Rodriguez and Lawrence Fishburne were married in real life, and that makes a lot of sense to how well they they work together on screen and how much you believe what they're going through. And I think she gives a phenomenal performance. Um, being a kind of stoic female character, which you don't see too often. Um, and I really like that she's portraying that. Um, I'm going to give this one a four only because of uh, that scene that we talked about just really took me out of it a bit. Um, I know, and I know that's nitpicky, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going to give this one a four. Um, and my favorite scene is the the end there where... Will comes and sits down next to Jack, uh, and says, "You know, I'm good. I'm just gonna wait until you're ready." Uh, that, I think, that's important for what happens later on and their relationship and and the need to to sow those seeds between the two of them. Yeah. Um, can I take a small moment to promote another horror host real quick? Sure. Before I lose it, lose my time. Um, <laughs> I've already lost it. Uh, no, I've been following Count Gordeval lately. Yeah. And I think incredible. he's definitely, yeah, worth checking out. Check out his Facebook. Old school horror host. Just fun, funny, campy, showing some really great old horror movies that you may not be able to find out there. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to give him a little, a little shout out. Yeah, you met him. I did. I did meet him <laughs> closely. Okay. He was quite, quite, yeah. He, he admired I'm scared. Your, yes, yes. I uh, he's I'm harmless. A, he, yeah, that's right. Well, he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Dizel. All right. I um, 
I, I really enjoyed this. I and I, I do believe that this is where the show gets its footing. This is when this is when Fanables became a thing. Uh, starting here, um, we really get the, I, all the dynamics are locking into place with our three main characters. Um, our supporting characters get a lot of good time here too, outside of Alana Bloom, who is not <laughs> present, um, unfortunately. But uh, you know, you gotta. Everybody's gotta have a week off. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I, there's a lot going on here, and I'm going to give this a four and a half as well. I, I really like this episode, and I think, I think what gives it that is the whole Jack and Bella, uh, you know, interaction and and the meaning there. But you also have Will and his sleepwalking, and there's all kinds of interesting things there. There's a conflict between Jack and. And Will, that's really exciting. Uh, there's a great moment that you could choose as a favorite moment when he uh, he gets fed up with Jack and gives him some crap in front of everybody. And Jack gets upset and says, "I, you know, tell me I didn't hear that." He says, and everybody else walks away <laughs> really fast. And then you know they have a conversation. Uh, and you know you feel that though. You really feel it. You feel that pow, that conflict, the meeting of heads there. Um, the interaction between Hannibal and, and Will, the, their, their banter back and forth, their, uh, the way Hannibal always brings it back around to uh, kind of undermine either Jack, his and Jack's relationship or to kind of, you know, deepen that seed that there's something up with you, Will. You know, he's always kind of burying these notions uh, in this conversation. So, the dialogue here is so well written. The the whole story. This this is a terrific episode. Um, uh, and outside of yeah, I, I see where you're coming from, Vanessa. Like, how did he do that? Like, <laughs> I wasn't, you know, you know, how did he see the flames on the? Well, we know why. Yeah. Talking, but a supernatural aspect. There's a couple little things in it that I'm just like, yeah. You know what? I I will say that like. I kept expecting to explain that he had some tie into like a federal database of you know, people or something. And because of that, yeah, that, that kind of, that kind of seemed like a loose end for me as well, which is probably one of the reasons I didn't give it a five, but you know, cause normally there's some kind of reasoning why people do, which I don't mind if there's a supernatural, but if that's, if it's not like an integral part of the show in general, it does seem out of the blue. Um, yeah. I mean, this character was a method to mm -hmm. for, you know, kind of build on the themes that the rest of the show was doing, which is, which is why this show started to get really great. Yeah. Right? Although I'm wondering now every time I see like Hannibal giving something to Will, I'm wondering, did he put some like stuff in his coffee? You know, I'm wondering if I'm starting to think maybe like even his medication may be something that the Hannibal's messing with. What's happening of, to Will? Yeah, the same thing he did to you know, um uh, uh not uh what's her name? Um Abigail. Yes. I'm kind of wondering if maybe he might be drugging him to sort of bring out um you know, his visions and stuff, but I don't know. Maybe yeah. reading too much into it. Or he's just using his mental expertise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess in some ways his mental expertise maybe is that is already that supernatural aspect of the show to where he can sort of see in that. So in, in some ways, maybe the other guy can sort of see that the evil in people, if you want to look at it from that perspective, but yeah. Yeah. it is a stretch. That's a stretch. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. There's our review of Hannibal season one, episode five. I hope you're enjoying this revisit of this classic, classic television series. Uh, you know, and uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled for any whispers of a Hannibal movie or Hannibal season four. Yeah. They keep it keeps coming up about every three to four months, you know, a couple times a year. They keep it alive. They keep the fanables hopes alive. The you never know. Now that it's on Netflix, they uh, might do a well, well, special. That, that, I know. Uh, I know. Uh, Mads keeps pushing it. That he's had some interviews recently, and he's been like talking about it, like yeah. a madman. Like a madman. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm hoping they do it. I mean, at the same time, we do have that Clarice show that's supposedly going to be made that's just not even affiliated. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, one of the things that, you know, hindered it, you know, season four back in when NBC canceled it was the ownership because they had, they had already given away rights for things. And so if, if Netflix wanted to, they couldn't have funded it. They talked about it, but they couldn't do it. No, and that's why they had elements that's, that were reminiscent. Like you have later on, you have a, a uh, trainee 
mm-hmm. that's uh, kind of reminiscent of Clarice. Yeah. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, they, they can't use Buffalo Bill or Cl- Clarice in any things. And that's the only thing they were hoping for, because I know Fuller wanted to um, cast a woman of color as Clarice if they ever got to do that season. But, you know, with this new Clarice series, that may uh, maybe put that off. But maybe that'll get canned. Yeah, but at the same time, it supposedly has a really great idea for the fourth season. It doesn't involve. Of course that, it does. So. Of course it does. No, um, not if you don't have Hannibal in it. Like I, I understand wanting to make Clarice Sterling her own strong character, but also. <laughs> Luckily, they can't use they can't use Hannibal in it. So it's yeah, I know. Really, so that's no, why I'm, I'm more interested in seeing what Fuller does with his season four than. Although I'll watch it, because again, when Hannibal came out as a huge science lands fan, I was like, I'm not sure. That's well, true. This, guy, right? it, this accent, if he's going to be able to pull an Anthony Hopkins, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I eat my words on that. I <laughs> so I, I like it just as much as Science of Lambs, but yeah, there's, yeah. Been, there's been a number of shows like that. Hannibal was one. The Exorcist TV show was pretty good. Of course, Westworld, right? What we do in the shadows. That what was we do in the shadows. Is one? Yeah, yeah, in some ways, it's it's almost become a little bit better than the movies. Yeah, so. So. But this one did it first. All right. <laughs> Vanessa, Dave, Christopher, thank you for joining me tonight. This was a blast. Mm-hmm. On episode six. Yes. Yep. Chris, uh, I can't hope, they, hope they keep kicking us <laughs> in the cockles. <laughs> <laughs> Oyster stew. All right. Let's say goodnight. Good night. Good night. Good night.